Welcome to Camp Peculiar. My name is Aaron, and this is a channel dedicated to visual storytelling using AI art. Hey, guess what? A few days ago, I had an idea, and this idea was how to get the perfect background or setting shots for any AI comic panel you might be working on. I knew in my heart that it was brilliant. I thought, this is a super AI comic creation hack on the order of five minutes craft videos helpfulness. It, it's as helpful as any DIY woodworking tip you would see on Instagram Reels. And then I realized that someone was already doing something similar with a Blender plugin. But you know what? Something similar does not mean the same. So I ran over to the audio visual cabin to record this video. Okay, so here's the problem. You need a specific perspective or vantage point for a location or for a panel that you're working on in your AI comic. You can see it in your head and you will accept no compromise to that particular shot. A wall of a certain height, the tops of city buildings, or a particular angle of an Adventure Time style valley. In mid-journey, this is tough because you basically have nothing to work with but words. Yeah, you can throw an image in there. Good luck with that. But in stable diffusion we can show the AI process an image of the angle or the wall, the vantage point, the valley, if you will, that we want. And then we can let Stable Diffusion fill in all the details for us and render it out in the style of our particular project. Look, I know this isn't groundbreaking. We're all aware that Google Street View has long been a hack for getting comic AI backgrounds to be drawn from a specific angle or vantage point. Find the shot at the angle that looks good. You take a screenshot, you bring it into Stable Diffusion, and you let it do its magic. We're going to go into that whole process in just a second. Or you can go to a city location. Here we are in Los Angeles. Capture something that has most of the detail that you're looking for. Bring it into the Stable Diffusion plugin. Put in style information. And there you go. You got an image. But... Here's the problem. Google Maps and Google Earth, for that matter, won't give you any angle you want. It's only going to give you an angle from the car that took the original Street View picture. So enter 3D and my most brilliantly hacky AI comic idea I've ever had on a Wednesday. Why not, I thought, use a free web-based 3D program that anyone can learn in two seconds. It's super simple to create a rough outline of the shot that I want, and then I can have Stable Diffusion try and fill in all the details. Does this AI super hack work? You bet it does. It it, it does. It it works as good as like your 1984 Corolla hatchback works. Like it'll get, it's going to get you there. There's no doubt about that. And let me show you an example. Let's uh, make a mountain and a valley, but, but from the direction, from the vantage point, from the perspective that we want, we'll do it in sort of an adventure timey kind of style. You're going to go to the Tinkercad website, which is run by Autodesk, the company that uh, built 3D Studio Max, bought a lot of other software such as Maya. And now they have this Tinkercad. It's a free AutoCAD-ish like Google SketchUp like uh, environment for making 3D models. And it's just super quick and super easy. You can sign in with your Google account. And here's what you're going to do. Using the primitive shapes there along the right, you can click on the paraboloid or the half sphere or both of them. Click on them, move them onto the stage there. Then you can scale them up using those little square there. You can hold down shift to uniformly scale them, make them much bigger. You can stretch them, turn them, rotate them. Drag a bunch of those out there until you get your valley looking the way that you want. Now, before you move your camera into the final position, you want to go ahead and color these and try to give them each sort of a different color. You can start with light and work your way out to dark or whatever you want to do. This is going to help stable diffusion a lot in a little bit. So you have your mountainous valley created and colored. It took you all of three or four minutes to do that. Now you're going to tumble and orbit and pan and move the camera around using that front side thing. You just left click on that 3D cube in the upper left hand corner there to sort of move it around. You can watch a tutorial on Tinkercad. Get the camera where you want and then you're not going to render it anything. Just screen capture it on a Mac that's holding down command, control, shift and the number four all at the same time and then drag out the part of the image that you want to capture. If you're on a Windows machine, good luck. I think you probably already know how to do a screen capture. Then we're going to load up the Stable Diffusion plugin in Photoshop, which is available for free from the Adobe plugin store connect thingy. I know it all, it sounds complicated. You have to load it and then you have to go over to like Dream Studio and set up an account and then get your API key. It's really easy. It just takes a few minutes to get the Stable Diffusion plugin set up in Photoshop. If it were a hassle, I would let you know. It's really not. First thing we want to do in the Stable Diffusion plugin is turn on the option for it to use images. You'll find that right there in the middle and then change the drop down from select uh, like whole document or whatever it says to selected layer. We only want stable diffusion just looking at the layer that we have selected, which is the pasted image of our 3D sort of mountainous valley. 
Now, before we hit dream at the bottom and generate an image, there's something we need to understand about the relationship between the prompt strength and the image strength. These two things are our best friends and also mortal enemies. When what you've typed into the prompt field conflicts with what your image is of, they tend to be mortal enemies. When they complement each other, then they tend to be best friends. And that's what we want to do now. We want to get them to complement each other. So in the top part, we're going to type in our prompt. We're going to type in something like valley of mountains with cloudy sky, trees. And that's just a few words. You want to keep your prompt sort of focused on details that will add to your scene, not redefine your scene. So valley of mountains is, is kind of what we already have. We're adding in cloudy sky, trees, things like that. And then the rest of the prompt, the the last half of it, is all just style information, cell shaded, anime scene, cartoon scene. And therefore, we can turn the prompt strength up pretty high. Like, I'm talking 17, 18, 19. I use 20 quite often. Then under image strength, the trick here is to use as little image strength as you can before Stable Diffusion starts changing the layout, the framing, and the perspective of your image. So a great place to start is at like 34, 35, and I rarely ever go above 50, 55, something like that. So start low in the 30s and work your way up. You're looking for that perfect blend between all that style information coming through, all those details that you've added in the prompt, and Stable Diffusion not changing the layout or the perspective or the vantage point of the image that you pasted in from 3D. You can also start with the step count low. I would start with the step count around 30, 35, and then work it up into the 50s as your image gets better and better. So then just make sure the output size matches the image size that you have in Photoshop. Then you hit dream and you see if you like what you got. You can then send that image to its own layer in Photoshop, rasterize that layer, then select that layer, and then run the process all over again, not on your 3D pasted layer, but on the new AI layer. And you can just continue to generate on top of layer on top of layer until you get closer and closer to what you want. You can also do this with cities, getting the infamously hard to do in mid journey, uh, looking down at the tops of buildings and seeing air conditioning vents and all that kind of stuff like that. A very common comic setting, but sort of a hard one to generate just using a text prompt. Worth noting, there is a free Blender plugin called Render AI or something like that. It does pretty much exactly what the Photoshop Stable Diffusion uh, plugin does, but it saves you the step of having to go to Tinkercad and screen cap it and paste it on a layer, which honestly takes two seconds, so it's not that big a deal, and Blender is way harder to use than Tinkercad, in my personal opinion. But if you already know Blender and you love Blender, then you can certainly just copy this workflow. Start in Blender, do your modeling in there, change the material color of all your things in there, and then you just use use the plugin in Blender pretty much exactly like I described in Photoshop, except for the values are have different numbers. Is this the future of AI comics? Will it work on 3D models of people in different poses? In the future, will we just get a blank model and move the camera to where we want and pose the character way they want and then hit an AI button and it will fill in the costume, the facial expression, the hair, the background, and all that kind of stuff like that? I don't know. I really like the idea of a blend between art and AI automation like that, but maybe that will just be unnecessary in the months and years to come. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Hey, Say hi in the comments below, and I'll see you around Camp Peculiar.